comment ça s'est passé So uh, this talk is around using external authentication with Drupal. So it's integrating Drupal with external authentication sources. This is something we're finding more and more interesting to clients in that basically it's solving the problem of you don't have to remember your login and password. You don't need a login and password for your Drupal. You know, often this, this is using social media logins, right? They're the lowest hanging fruit and this sort of stuff. Uh, you, I mean, it's pretty common behaviour out there in the world of internet that you see lots of uh, applications that allow you to log in using one or the other of social medias, and that includes the likes of Gmail and you know Hotmail and, and Yahoo and all sorts of stuff. Um, so there's more than one way to skin this cat, but we've done it. I mean, I'll go through sort of our approach in this. So you know, user authentication. You know, it's it's how we log in, um, and of course, it has a lot of implications around making sure that some information is not available to some people. Uh, sometimes it doesn't really matter much, you know, like getting into a site really is a matter of basically signing up for some marketing information and giving them your email, and other times it's a really big deal. Um, you know, we don't, often, I was just sort of joking today actually with this client who called me up to pass this password that we needed to ECSH into this machine, and it was this long, it was this long combination of explanation marks and one, two, three, and I just said, you know, everyone's just lost the love of, dreaming up passwords, haven't you, you know, like, because we're just so sick of it, you know, there's just so many out there, and, you know, my, I constantly sort of, I don't even want to know what my wife's password is for things, because I, I just know, I, I do know what it's going to be, and I just, I don't want to know that she's using our child's name for our, like, <laughs> for our bank account or whatever, that's why she doesn't, she doesn't have internet banking, but, uh, but this sort of stuff, you know, because it's just, there's too many of them, you know, like, basically, a lot of, a lot of services that you go along and use to get access, for me, was always a, you know, use it once, come back later, do password recovery, use it again, come back and worse later, do password recovery, use it again, because you just don't remember, you know, because I've still, you know, there's still this, uh, this geek part of me that wants to, no, it has to have capital letters and it can't be predictable and all this ridiculousness, which just means you're going to forget it, right? So, um, so, this, so the, the social media approach means, you know, you leverage the existing, you leverage another authentication source. So some terminology, some of these terminologies, uh, things like even single sign-on actually get thrown around by people and potentially they mean different things to different people. So what I, so the way I've broken it up and, you know, this, I don't think this is necessarily the perfect terminology, but it's the way I break it up, is you have setups where you have common authentication credentials, you know, that's where you have something like an, uh, a directory server in your environment, like I, Active Directory is a common example, right? So you have Active Directory, and an organization, and that means you know everyone uses the same login and password when they log in. Okay, so they still have to log in lots of times, but that's the only login and password they use. If you change it in the directory server, it's changed for all the applications. Okay, uh, single sign-on to me, and some people call that single sign-on, but single sign-on to me is more about signing in once and it actually moving across multiple applications, right? So that might mean that you sit down at your, your desk, uh, which is, you know, if you're in these Windows environments where, you know, you sit down at your desk and it says login and password, please, which is still actually talking to Active Directory. But it, uh, you log into that, and then from that point on, when, you, when you're clicking around the intranet or your mail, all that sort of stuff, that inherits those credentials from the environment using magical Windows domainy stuff. I don't, you know, I don't know much about how Windows works like that, but that's how it sort of does some stuff using NTLM and Kerberos. We've had to um, in integrate with that once or twice for um, learning management systems. And there's real constraints around you have to be in the same domainy type world. You can't be on the internet and stuff. So that to me is single sign-on, or uh, or logging in, for example, to WordPress and then clicking on a link that it takes you to Drupal and your, your authentication actually carrying across and you being logged into Drupal without having to enter a login and password, okay? So that's what I, that's what I understand as single sign-on. So cross-site authentication is, is sort of single sign-on but it's a matter of moving your login from one site to the other and that was always, this was often a really big security vulnerability and still is to a large degree. I mean, I remember rolling my way, I thinking, oh cool, I can just log someone into this side over here by doing a magical URL or something, which is like the first thing you shouldn't be doing. But that's how, in the old days, you sort of rolled up some hand protocol of how you were gonna you know, move a session from one, uh, one site to the other because you couldn't share the cookie. Uh, whereas there's a lot of, you know, there's some magical, MNET for Moodle, for example, it's a magical combination of redirects and web services and all that stuff, so it's secure, but it's complicated. So, 
So there's all sorts of external authentication protocols. Um, I certainly don't claim to be an expert on them. There's, you know, OpenID and OAuth and, and other sort of bespoke ways in which you can you can pass around, uh, you know, you can pass sessions around or authenticate via a trusted third party. You're essentially, you know, trusting another another system with your authentication. So, you know, obviously Drupal has all sorts of ways. You, you look on the Drupal um, site and you can see all sorts of um, modules that allow you to do things like use Facebook or LinkedIn or Google or, you know, or LDAP or stuff like that in order to log in, right? So that's one way of doing it is you essentially, you install one of these modules in your, in your Drupal and then you can, you know, you can use Facebook, you can use LinkedIn, stuff like that. So that's, that's one way of doing it. What we have, and we've sort of played around with that a wee bit, but, the way we've approached it is using a, an application called Simple Sam, um, using SAML, but using an application called Simple SAML PHP. Okay, so what this is is an identity provider that allows you that. I mean, there's a picture of it in a minute that that means that Drupal and other applications in the family are only speaking SAML, uh, which can then go away and, and talk to these other application providers if needed. So, SAML, security assertion markup language. Um, it's, I'll jump straight to point number four. If, if, you, if you look at it and read about it and think you understand it at first and you're not mildly confused, then you probably don't understand it or, you know, it really is, it is confusing. It is tricky. It's, a, it's sort of, it's an elaborate solution. To me, I, I look at it and I see um, it's just an elaborate solution to the fact that you can't share cookies across, you can't, you can't share a cookie from one site to the other. You know, if you could just share a cookie, then you'd be able to go, okay, you can just, okay, side over there, you're allowed to see my cookies, and then it would be easy, you'd be able to share sessions, in a web browser sense anyway, but you can't do that. You can't do that, those are the rules. Um, I'm sure there'd be all sorts of problems if you did allow that. So SAML, um, SAML is this large song and dance of redirects and all sorts of madness where you are essentially um, doing an authentication hand, handshake in plain sight. Is, the, is sort of the way I look at it, where your, all the communication is happening via your browser and all sort of visible, right? But there's, there's backwards and forwards and keys and encryption and all that sort of stuff, and it's relatively seamless when it works, but it is, it is complicated. Um, so with a, with a SAML network, and this is you know, one of the many ways of SAML, so SAML isn't, it isn't a client, it's not like LDAP or something where you just, you've got some client talking to some server and you talk SAML to it and it goes yay nay and the SAML server just sits in the background and you know, you're just talking SAML and like LDAP. A SAML server is, well SAML, a is actually internet facing, it needs to be, so you've got all these, you've got Drupal, Moodle, WordPress for example, you know, Joomla, whatever, okay, Koha, lots of things. And, and Simple SAML actually has to be also internet facing. So you're, this is an example with an LDAP server. LDAP in this case would be hidden, right? LDAP would be behind all of this. But Simple SAML has to be here because when you go to Drupal, and there's another slide, what it actually does is it bounces you between Simple SAML and Drupal to, to do the, the magical authentication and single sign-on. Okay? So it has to be, there's some things that some corporates haven't understood when we've talked to them about um, using SAML because, you know, things like SharePoint support SAML and they go, okay, we'll just do this architecture and we'll have SAML down here and it's like, well, you can't have SAML down there because it has to be able, the client has to be able to see SAML, it has to be on the internet and that's what, oh, 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 we don't like that, you know. So, you know, because they've got real rules around LDAP being anywhere near the internet and if you've got an external, um, if you've got an external system, uh, one of the problems that one of our clients had was, so we, we got a horrible IPsec VPN which I hope just goes away soon because it's a nightmare. And they, like that's how we do, we do LDAP with them. We do Active Directory integration with them. But they want to they shut this whole thing down because if our server gets uh, compromised, then they, someone can still come along and just troll the LDAP directory by throwing LDAP at there. Because, you know, L, Active Directory being Active Directory, it doesn't, you know, it can't, you can't easily control what people have got access to. You can't really say, if, if they can check one user, they can check all 50,000 of them, right? And you can sort of just throw this LDAP query out and just say, give me all your users, please, you know? So they, they wanted to put a layer in between it and SAML didn't, wasn't feasible, but that was their idea for a minute. So here's the bit that is, uh, I have to take a few deep breaths before I try and explain it. So, so you come along, so your user agent is your browser, your service provider is um, Simple SAML, 
and as each provider is Google, for example, okay, or it could be other things. So you come along with your browser and you look at a page that is behind an authentication wall, okay? So it needs to be, uh, it needs to be. There's an access control policy. So it, it uh, as part of this, you go, you you sort of end up on this page, and, and Drupal boots you back to uh, the simple SAML, which gives you a list of authentication providers. In our implementation, this is like you know Google, Facebook, whatever, okay? And when you click on when you click on Google, for example. You, you go to Google and there's a magical, there's some magic in the URL as a get it. So that Google knows where you came from. Okay, so it knows that it's this particular simple sample instance, so it can do meaningfully stuff once you once you authenticate. So then you authenticate, you log in with your Google account. And obviously, my Drupal were none of that's seen any of these logins. It's it's all happening in Google land. So Google then pushes you back, and you wouldn't notice sometimes that are, you see these buttons come up sometimes with these verses. Are you okay with you know giving this site your Authentication details, like them validating that you're okay, and like you press this button, and you end up back at the, you end up back at your in your sort of family of uh, sites, which then you've now got a session inside uh, sort of the, the simple SAML, the SAML layer, and you you can then be sort of directed into say, into say Drupal, this bit here is the same as this bit here, so you've now got a session, but you actually get as far as Drupal. And Drupal might actually say, okay, I know you're Andrew, and I know you've got a login, but you can't see that resource, or you have to do this, or whatever. that will just be Drupal handling it. And, and, when you, and if you click across into, um, if you click across into Moodle, for example, okay, from Drupal, it doesn't repeat this bit. Okay, it bounces you back and forwards to simple SAML, but that, then, that, then it understands and it pushes you back to Moodle and you've been logged into Moodle, or WordPress, or Joomla, or Koha. Poorly explained, very complicated. So, what, why do it this way as opposed to you know using these plugins uh, where you just say, okay, I want to log in with Facebook, throw the Facebook account in. Um, you can use, you can, you can. Some of the challenges of single sign-on solutions and, and cross-site authentication, where they're bespoke, is that it's okay to get two applications talking to each other, but if you want to add a third one in, that becomes really, really complicated, and there can be some. Uh, some rules around what order you have to log in, and, and you know we've done that before, uh, or, or even to be able to, we mentioned before integrating a Drupal with a Drupal. You might not be, you might be able to inter integrate a Drupal with a Drupal, but not three Drupals, for example, if you're doing some of these philosophies, because it just doesn't work that way. It sort of depends on there only being one pair. So doing this it ha it allows you to have sort of a, an infinite layer of applications on the top who are all talking to the SAML infrastructure as well as underneath that you can have multiple authentication providers right so you can you can uh, that, that's an advantage and then you can leave a CRM to being a CRM or a SharePoint to being a SharePoint or a CMS to being a CMS or you know an LMS to be enough so you don't have to sort of implement one bit of functionality inside another system so you can you have the ability to take pieces out reasonably painlessly like that means you can take an application out of the front end or, or your authentication source out of the back, right? And that doesn't massively alter the, old, the whole architecture of the solution. Um, yeah, so you can also do some, you could, Simple SAML can also act as a bit of an owner to the whole user model. Uh, some of the challenges with these modules that, that, that we've seen, we never massively use them, like the, the Facebook or the LinkedIn uh, module inside. Um, Drupal, but certainly in other applications, they have slightly different ideas about what this what this integration means and what the data looks like and what the object of the user is. And, and you know, if you actually try and glue them together, that there's a few differences, and you end up sort of wrestling them, and you're sort of solving the wrong problem. Whereas if you use simple, if you use a SAML layer, then you can actually encase that logic in one place, and you can you can understand what the differences are and take steps and validate or or fudge or or you know take, and it's all just in one place. And that means that you add a new application and on top. And it, it leverages the existing communication channels, right? So that's that's been useful. Uh, when we wanted to do things like pull data out of Google or Facebook, you know, because their API does does actually give you some data, and it, and it makes it nice and clean as to what's actually available to all the applications. So that yeah, they've got different ideas about what they'll give you, and you know, quite rightly so. Um, so the challenges to this approach is is. SAML and simple SAML PHP. It's an open source application which you can download. I mean, there's not much to look at. It's only, you know, if you actually if you actually see if you actually see a screen from simple SAML, it means that the whole system's broken. 
because it never, the only thing you'll see is a big exception because there's no like login or any of that sort of stuff. It actually means things are broken, right? So, so you don't bother styling it or anything or theming it because hey, no one's ever going to look at it until kaboom. And everyone's going, um, I'm looking at this big thing with all this text and it's got SAM all written on it. I'm like, oh, right, yeah, okay, not good. <laughs> so certainly errors and, and you know, it's a complicated, it's a complicated bit of glue that, to tie it all together uh, and the more moving parts you've got, the more complexity, you know, the trickier it is. Failures and errors are sometimes quite challenging to replicate. Um, you, the development environments are harder to build because it sort of needs to have real DNS for these. You can't just sort of cook up a DNS, put on a patch up, throw a site up. It has to be doing all this redirect dance. It has to actually work or you can't log in. And you know, there's, there's real, you can't just, um, that's been a challenge for new, new developers. For example, we, we, come, we bring someone in who's like a Drupal dev and they know what they're doing, but we throw this at them and they just sort of sit there and go, whoa, you know, like how do I, they sort of change something and it all explodes. So we ended up having to do some stuff with, you know, custom VMs and all that, but it, it certainly doesn't make things any easier. Authentication sources, uh, some of them are a bit ropey, they break, they don't work all the time, you know, like you try and authenticate to them and it doesn't work. I won't say which one it is, but, you know, you can what figure, letter? yeah. Yeah, that's right. What letter does it start with? Yeah. And like, you know, you go on forums and they go, hey, cool, yeah, we know that's broken, but no one's going to help you. Some of them rate limit you, so periods of heavy use for your site will essentially mean people can't log in, you know, so you lose. Um, you know, some of the debugging and automated testing and all this stuff is really challenging. This is sort of not so much about Simple SAML, but, you know, if someone's logging in with their Facebook account in order to see a problem, you can't say, hey, man, can I just have your Facebook password, please? You know, because I can't see it on my Facebook account. You know, that was always our approach. We'd sort of say, hey, they go, Facebook's broken. We'll go, okay, we'll log in with Facebook. Yeah, it's all fine. It works fine with me. And they're like, oh, well, but, you know, I'm like, um, so what do we do next? The, the, the we, we spend, we ate a lot of time on one of our projects uh, with just basically, we set up, we set up a, um, an exception email, which I saw from, a, it was an idea I got from Rails actually, there were some Rails modules where if, if, it, if it breaks then you get, it sends an email to people with a, big, with a big stack trace, which is quite cool actually because sometimes you don't, that, that's not something you necessarily have visibility, you know, like even with Drupal if you had it with say you were having load patterns which meant the database was rejecting connections sometimes but working most of the time, you might not actually notice, right? So this, so this, what this, and that was the case with this. I mean, it was working, you know, most or not all of the time, but every now and again it was just exploding for, for whatever reason, you know, like there was all sorts of reasons it could break. And we, uh, we set up this, these emails, so it started spamming us every time there was a failure in the, in the, in the, in the SAML layer. And, you know, and then we just started working through these errors and, and getting further and further. And, you know, we got, we got probably, uh, thanks, we got probably, we got there. I mean, we, we, it's pretty tight at the moment, but it was a very, it was a laborious process and it wasn't one you could throw just any developer. They had to have a clear understanding of, 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 this, of the technology. Also, common look and feel if you glue all the applications together can be laborious because of different theming layers. Uh, so just, uh, just, just some examples of um, some projects that we've used this on. Uh, a system called Plain, which is a, which was uh, Drupal, Moodle, and Mahara. This was actually sort of where we uh, used this for the first time, and it, it supports about six social media logins: your Google, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, all that stuff. And you can associate multiple um, logins with one account, so you can log in either with your Google or your Facebook or your LinkedIn and all that sort of stuff. And that was really popular. That was actually the only login they supported, so there is no, there are no manual accounts. Uh, that was for the Department of Education and Training. Open to study. Uh, this is a project we just did in yeah, recently. We're still doing it. It's a, it's a MOOC, a massive open online course. So they've also gone with a Drupal and Moodle um, solution. It's probably more Moodle than Drupal. Moodle's a learning management system, obviously. And they've got um, three social media logins as well. But they also support manual accounts, so you can still actually fire your account. And interestingly enough, people are more interested in the manual accounts, which I was quite surprised about. I would have thought everyone would have used social media accounts, but that hasn't been the way it's gone. One of the really nifty uh, use cases, which we haven't actually done a lot of times, but I think is really is really exciting, is using using Drupal as an e-commerce solution and plugging it into another and gluing it to another application. So you make the most of a, of the commerce capabilities, and you don't and you use it. You know, example, if you want to sell courses online or do that sort of stuff, then you let Moodle be the learning management system, and then you talk between them with some web services, and you and you let commerce be, be the um, be the commerce gateway because. You know, one of my developers wanted to just build all this, wanted to build a commerce gateway in Moodle, you know, because it's, hey, it's open source and you can extend it. But I was like, you know, it's massive. 
you know, you, you've got to do you've got to do all sorts of reporting and all sorts of interfaces. It's like, hey, cool. It's one thing to set up a bit of an API and hey, I just charge some money, but but really, you know, this is it's underestimating just how much there is to the likes of commerce, the, the power it gives you when you want to do, you know, coupons or discounts or any of this sort of stuff, which is all part of the framework of Drupal and commerce. So you can leverage that, and the interaction between the two is quite simple. You know, it's just saying success send the LMS information saying that someone's enrolled, and then they click across there and they're just magically enrolled, and you've themed them to look the same. So we've sort of done that a couple of times, and it's quite, it's quite a nice, clean allocation, because Moodle, building, a, building, an LMS that, building an LMS in Drupal could be done, but it's huge, you know? Moodle's a very, very big, mature application, does a lot of stuff, uh, you know, and you can take that and use it, and they don't actually have to dance too much between themselves anyway, other than that, so that's, that's about it. So, reasonable time. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions. Uh, what's the name of your child? Sorry? <laughs> what's the name of your child? Okay. Uh, what's the back then you back with? Yeah. Bezza. Bezza. <laughs> John O. Yeah. So Simple SAML PHP runs as a server, does it? Um, it's it an runs. independent application running somewhere on the internet. Yeah, it's an application. It, that's actually my alarm. It's an, it's an application that runs usually in the same infrastructure that you run everything else, yeah? Yeah. But, and you sort of run one instance per group of Pretty applications. Much, yeah. 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 And it really only comes into its own, as you point out, I think, w once you're beyond one application. Once you're beyond probably... One with one sign on. So well, if maybe you're two social, applications. Maybe two applications. Because yeah. you can glue two applications together quite quite easily sometimes. Yeah. And that's you know, maybe that's hey less less trouble, you got more visibility, you are, you've got more comfortable with it. But it's when you start wanting to have multiple like a lot of organizations they wanna they want they want everything to work together. They want yeah. they want their SharePoint and their this and their that and their library managers to all work together and, and SAML's sort of the way you're supposed to do that, you know? Um, my question is about um, based on your work with Simple SAML, what, there's two questions. Is there anything specific about SAML that means it's tied to the PHP? Is SAML, no. it's not a PHP specific. No, it's a big page. pile of XML and all horrible stuff. Yeah, it's Actually, that's, that's an, a, another question though. Is there a, presumably these are my questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so can go. So is there a, is there a Drupal hook at the a module? Yeah, there is. It's a uh, SAML one? service provider or something. I think it's called. Oh. Yeah, we actually you, you, we actually use SAML uh, Drupal at both ends. So it's on fr on the front end that actually uses SAML as the authentication provider, but we store the users inside Drupal as well. So it sits underneath SAML as well, which yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Don. Um, based on your work with Simple SAML. Uh, have you seen any of the persona stuff coming out of Mozilla? You guys looked at that or thought about I haven't, no. identity? Oh, there's some identity management stuff here. I know, I know, I know a guy who was working used to work for Catalyst. No, I don't know a lot about it. I've heard that it's happening. But. That was actually a separate question, by the way. You had three. You had three. I think that uh, I've, I've done a bit of experimentation. You've obviously done a lot more. But the thing that kind of I found weird was that you, s you actually run Simple SAML in front of Drupal that actually sits there as a separate PHP app and it just sets some headers and then the Drupal module essentially doesn't do anything to do with SAML, all it does is looks for the authentication headers, right? So it's, the Drupal integration is really, really basic and all of the logic's done in this Simple SAML app. Yeah, the endless redirect you'll get if you play around with long enough, you get this thing endless redirect error where it just they keep bouncing each other's back and eventually the browser goes hey it's not right i was going to ask you you're actually required to use https or ssl connections for all the logins i don't or is know that... i don't know if it's well you you're using it when you uh when you log in in google or whatever you, you're it's all https right but i don't know i don't think i don't think the rest of it depends on it because it's all just a big pile of messy horrible yeah. you know things like posts and and gets and you know like it's just freaky looking you know <laughs> and, 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 and you find it like that in, in most cases you're actually putting LDAP behind the a simple SAML login or are you actually using we're the not logins? but I think people are not we're using we're generally using so uh, uh, you know social media underneath or something like Drupal we tend to put it into Drupal so have the users stored in Drupal correct yeah, yeah.